never know what to order here. You're the one who picked this place, Miles. Oh, I like the place. I just never know what to order. Jack Hudson, what a spectacularly lovely surprise. Eleanor Rippendorf, we met at last year's Children's Hospital charity event. Surely you remember. Right, you're a friend of uh, someone in the uh, director's office. A friend to all of law enforcement, I like to think. <laughs> but particularly the FBI, which makes it such a propitious coincidence that we should run into each other like this. It's that time of year again. What time of year is that, Eleanor? I'm sorry, these are my partners in fighting crime, uh, Bobby, Demetrius, and the one who's perplexed about what to order is Miles. <laughs> I don't suppose we'd be lucky enough that they would all be single. <laughs> this year's fundraising event is an internet bachelor auction capped off by a gala dinner dance. A few of the FBI's most eligible and handsome might help bring us in a record take. Sorry, I'm ineligible. And I can't speak for Bobby or Miles. Let me make sure I'm understanding you correctly. Dozens, perhaps hundreds, of single women bid on the bachelor of their choice, and the highest bidder wins the date. Well, I think I speak for some of us when I say sign me up. For the sake of the children, of course. Excellent. I'll have a videographer come by, and we'll film your online presentations at your convenience. And your interviews will go onto our website, and the ladies watch them bid. Very simple and painless. The way dating ought to be. <laughs> it seldom is. Oh, and the winning bids will be announced at our dinner dance, which I hope you can all attend. Oh, yeah. Sounds like a worthwhile course. I look forward to it. I will be there. Oh, thank you so much, Jack. I knew I could count on you. And I know you'll do very well for us. <laughs> I can't tell you how grateful I am to be married right now. I can't tell you how grateful I am not to be Jack. There are guys in the 10 most wanted list who aren't that wanted. Well, one thing's clear. We know who'd be buying you. Oh, let's just eat. Garrett has an assignment for you. What is it? He wants you to take a meeting on an old dog. OK. An old dog. Cases that are still technically open, but aren't being actively investigated. Cold case. There's this woman. Her name's Phyllis Randall. She calls a few times a year, and uh, I usually talk to her. She's very nice, but I never know quite what to say. Her daughter, Julie, was a bank teller who was killed in a robbery about 12 years ago. They never caught the guy who did it. She always wants to know if we're making any progress. So Garrett thinks somebody should sit down, have a face-to-face -face conversation with her, let her know that it's not likely they're ever going to find her killer. If you want, I'd be happy to go with you. Thank you so much for meeting with me. I don't want to be a pest, but my daughter was all I have, and I feel I owe it to her not to ever give up. Can you tell me if there's been any progress in her case? Not much more than the last time I talked with you. I did a quick review of the case. We just don't have much to go on. I know the wheels of justice sometimes turn slowly. But I'm running out of time. I've been diagnosed with cancer. And uh, my doctor tells me I won't beat it. But uh, I will not die. I can't until I see the monster that killed my Julie brought to justice. Will you please help me? If I live to be a hundred and never see the seven wonders, that'll be all right should my tender heart be broken i will cry those teardrops you know and i will be just fine cause nothing changes
Wow, Miles, why are you so dressed up? Somebody die? Somebody get married? You get married? You die? Can't a man wear something that complements his refinement and upbringing without provoking a superfluity of catcalls? I simply dressed this way today because it made me feel good. Oh, the look sharp, feel sharp school of thought. Like Lou's the best. Call me crazy, but I'm guessing it has more to do with the eligible bachelor auction video shoot that just happens to be scheduled for today. What video? What eligible bachelor auction? Oh, Miles committed us to being prizes in an auction to raise funds for a children's charity. Me? It was your friend who solicited the favor. You were the one I heard saying, please, please, pick me, pick me. <laughs> it was to benefit the children. Um, for the children? Just like a good cause. No, I'm sure it is, but the method is a little questionable. They want to exploit us by auctioning us off like cattle to the highest bidder. Like pieces of meat. In my case, we're talking grade A, USDA, filet mignon. You mean women are actually going to bid for the chance to go out with you guys? Yikes, who's really being exploited here? And today's the day that the eligible bachelors are shooting the video that's putting the product on display. Like one of those bad reality shows. Who gets picked and who goes home a pathetic loser? However, in this instance, no one's going home the loser because it's for the children. Right, Miles? Hey, maybe we should have a little gentleman's and ladies wager on which of our three poster boys would get the highest bid. The FBI's version of the world's sexiest man. Who knows? There could even be calendars and <sighs> magazine covers. Hey, I think it's ridiculous enough that we're even doing this, so let's have a little fun, shall we? I'll go along with stakes to the winner, losers buy. And lobster. Or is that too rich for you, Miles? Gentlemen, prepare to pay off both the surf and the turf. We just wondered what you remember. What I remember is that it didn't have to go down the way it did. That poor girl never had a chance. Well, he may as well have shot her mother, too, because she's never recovered from it. It says on the case file there was a suspect, a James Hall. He worked on the cleaning crew at the bank for a short time and had a history of getting into trouble. But he had an alibi. It was flimsy, but we couldn't disprove it. And we didn't have any other evidence. What did your gut tell you at the time? Could have been him. To tell you the truth, I was never really sure. Do you know what happened to him, this James Hall? Where is he now? No idea. Security tapes from the bank. The mask the bank robber had on. They found it in a garbage can on the subway platform. When was the last time anyone really checked on this kid? Six, maybe seven years ago. So we don't know if a DNA check was ever done on it? Doesn't look like it. DNA has come a long way. I think we should send it to the lab. Gentlemen, P.D. Dillinger is a recent film school graduate who has generously agreed to donate his time and talent to help us with our bachelor videos. I think we should be able to get some amazing images here, uh, even though we're working with virtually no budget. Just so you know, we're on our lunch break, so we also have some time constraints. I've heard that time constraints and shoestring budgets can actually force more innovative decision-making and ultimately inspire a higher level of creativity. I'm not one to toot my own horn, but that worked real well on the pudding commercial I recently directed. We got some fabulous stuff. Uh, what else have you done, Petey? Well, there's the pudding commercial, and then there's this, and I have a number of projects pending. Just look into the camera, tell us about yourself, talk a little about the date the women will be bidding on, and just let your personality shine through. <laughs> Why don't we start with you, Jack? I know how busy you are. I might give you an extra 20 if you can hide his irresistible charm. <laughs> Keep the price down in my affordable range. <laughs> oh, that's kind of like keeping a thoroughbred from running. Nearly impossible. All right, Jack. When I give you the cue, don't be sharp. Don't be flat. <laughs> Just be natural, OK? And action. Uh I'm Jack Hudson, Special Agent with the FBI. G'day, Bobby Manning, Special Agent, FBI. Miles Leland III. Miles Leland III, very Special Agent with the FBI. I hope you like football because I have two tickets to the Giants-Redskins game. 
a romantic dinner at a fine Italian restaurant. Since I'm the uh, outdoor type, I'm offering a trip to the batting cages, a game of one-on-one, -on -one, um, basketball that is, followed by a picnic lunch in the park. What do you reckon, mate? Sound good? Hey? <laughs> Show me some love, Jack. Caress the camera with your eyes. A romantic dinner at a fine Italian restaurant, followed by a moonlit stroll along the mall, and then dessert, the choice of which I'll leave up to you. Hey, hey, those guys are laughing and throwing things. Use it, Miles. Make it work for you. Pull out your gun. Yeah, yeah. Come on. That's it. You're in control. Show me you're the man. Come on, show me you're the man. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Excellent. Sue, you take a look at this. I've set this up for occasions just such as this. Now I can see the monitor, and you're still facing us. That's very nice of you. I should have thought of it sooner. Actually, I did. It just took this long to get the screen. What have you got? The security cameras from the cold case bank robbery. Old technology. Stop action photography. Obviously, it doesn't hold a candle to what we have now. It almost looked like Julie was saying something to the thief right before he shot her. It might be what cost her her life. It's too jumpy, I can't really tell. There were two cameras aimed at that teller. The stop action would have been timed differently on each. Give me some time to work with them. I might be able to combine them and get a more fluid picture. I've seen that mask somewhere before. Hey, JP, tell us the lab has good news. Good news is, I found some micro-sized strands of human hair connected to it. You must have pulled it off and got rid of it in a hurry. Even so, 12 years ago, that wouldn't have been worth much. But it might be now? If you can find someone to match it with, I'm sure I have enough DNA to make an ID. James Hall would be a good place to start. Think you can get us an address? What have we got here? Real life Charlie's Angels? The face of the FBI is definitely improving. We'd like to ask some questions about the Julie Randall case. You remember a bank got robbed and she got shot in the face? Yeah, maybe you ain't heard, but I was cleared. OK, I, like I said before, I, I had nothing to do with that robbery. And the fact that I wasn't charged proves it. Then I'm sure you wouldn't mind giving us a DNA sample. <laughs> if you're not a match with what we've got, then presto, we disappear and nobody ever bothers you again. Let's think about this. You're trying to close a case, and I give you my DNA to prove that I'm innocent, right? And then some lab guy, he does whatever he has to to make it match. Thanks for the offer, but uh, I don't see the upside. Break's over, angels. Gotta go. Go see a man about some DNA. Ladies and gentlemen, the co leaders in the Bio Bastard for a Night Sweepstakes have been at the building. Well, co leaders, huh? Not too bad. Oh, sorry, Miles, I didn't see you there. Oh. So, uh, where am I? Let's just say you're in the half that makes the top half possible. You're saying there's only been $5 bid on me? Actually, you haven't gotten any bids. We just put that little line up so you know what color you will be. There's got to be a glitch. Nope, no glitch. Everything's up there. You're probably a slow starter, Miles. Any slower, he'd be moving backwards. I get the information as it comes in from the charity website. Every time someone makes a new bid, I can see it. I hope the pressure of being the two frontrunners isn't too much for your friendship to handle. No, not a problem. Just make sure my statistics are put up first. At no point do I want my bar to be shorter than his. 
You can't tell me Dave Foley from the DEA has more bits than me. I mean, he has no neck and a personality to match. Well, he may not have a neck, but he does have better odds than you do right now. Odds? Lucia's giving odds. The line on Bobby and Jack is even money. What am I? 80 to 1. Oh. Sue? Uh, Sue? Hi, JP. What's going on? I was calling your name. I'm, I'm sorry. I forgot about you not being able to hear me. It's okay. Levi likes to feel needed. It gives him job security. I got that DNA report back on your cigarette butt. I'm afraid it's not a match with the hairs on the Nixon mask. Your boy James Hall is cleared whether he wants to be or not. Despite all the reasons not to smoke, it looks like it worked in his favor. An ironic twist of fate. A reshoot? I just don't think I presented well in the stark surroundings of the FBI. I, I need a more creative setting to show me off to my full advantage. And a more honest presentation of my attributes would benefit the charity. We are doing this for the kids, after all. I already donated my time once. I can't really afford to keep giving away freebies. Yeah, of course, but uh, uh, look at it this way. As an artist, your final product is your calling card, and this particular calling card is going to be seen by a lot of people who wouldn't normally know your work, so surely you want to give it your best shot. I'll do it. If you pay for the session. Okay, but we do it right now. You know, you know, the first time I saw you, I thought to myself, this guy's got that something yeah, special. Can the sales pitch. You got the gig. Just do it before I change my mind. You got anything in a beach setting? I went back and forth over whether to call you or not. I'm just curious. Uh, we've gotten some DNA from the mask. The bank robber was rare. It gives us a starting point. We have technology we didn't have 12 years ago. Phyllis. I'm going to do everything I can to find out who did this. And I appreciate it. You may never know how much. I've prayed for so long for someone to come along and find Julie's killer. I know things happen in God's time, but now it seems he's answering my prayers. Sorry I'm late. Something came up at the office. Oh, that's OK. Sue was just telling me about the progress you're making. And, well, I'm very encouraged. Yeah, so are we. Did you see this? Is this some kind of joke? No joke. The bidding on Miles suddenly spiked through the roof. Yesterday he had nothing. Today he's leading the pack. He's not that far ahead. I'm drafting right behind him, right where I want to be. I'm afraid we're leaving you in the dust, though. Who's leaving who in the dust? Your boyfriend's losing out to Miles in the most eligible bachelor competition. I think he could use some consoling. First of all, I'm not sure I like that term, eligible. Oh, just a figure of speech, darling. <laughs> and second, I've been out with him. I know how much a date with him is worth. And it looks like somebody's about to pay way too much. Oh, doesn't her unflagging sensitivity just bring you to tears? I know it does me. <laughs> I put those surveillance tapes together if you want to take a look. It's still not great, but it might help fill in some of the missing picture. The movie's starting. So as a courtesy to those around you, please refrain from talking and turn off all cell phones. This is the part where the guard comes up behind the shooter. Definitely looks like Julie said something. Tara, can you run it again? Can you go tighter on her face? It's going to be fuzzy, but I can do it. Any idea? This makes no sense. What? I think she just warned him that the guard was coming up behind her. I'm sure she said, look out behind you. And then he turns around. Why would she do that? Why would she warn a bank robber? Is it possible that they knew each other? That they were working together? But then why would he shoot her? Maybe that's exactly why. The more I 
see it, the more it looks like Julie was warning him about the guard. Still doesn't explain why he would shoot her, though. I'm with Jack. Might actually give him more reason to shoot her. Maybe he got greedy. Didn't feel like splitting the take. Or maybe he knew the only one who could identify him was her, and everything changed after he shot the guard. That wasn't part of the plan, and he knew she was going to be freaked out. So you're figuring it was maybe a boyfriend. My money is always on the boyfriend. Some boyfriend. Somebody has to know what was going on in her life. It could help us figure out who this creep is. I need to talk to her mother. This will break her heart. At this point, she doesn't need to know anything about this. Let's find out what we really think happened first. Would you like some tea? No, thank you. I, I don't want to take too much of your time, Mrs. Randall. Oh, you're not, honey. I'm just so thankful somebody's finally doing something. After visiting with you, I almost feel like I know Julie. Did she ever talk about anyone special in her life, like a boyfriend? Um, Julie had the occasional date now and then, but never a steady boyfriend. She said she hadn't found the right guy. She was in no hurry. She thought she had plenty of time. What about friends? She had friends in high school, but she hadn't really stayed in touch with any of them. Maybe that's why we were so close. We were like best friends. She used to tell me everything. Would you happen to have any old address books, photo albums, or maybe Julie's high school yearbook? You starting to see a pattern here? We've seen five pictures of Julie in this book, and in all of them, she's standing next to the same girl, Mitzi Wells. That's right. I'd say Mitzi's as close to a best friend as we're going to get. Mr. Wells, I'm Sue Thomas. This is Jack Hudson. I'm the one who contacted you. I thought it would be better if we met out here. My boss might get the wrong idea if he knew the FBI came to see me. You said you wanted to talk about Julie Randall. Yes, you two are friends, right? Yeah. We're investigating the robbery in which she was killed. Do you mind if we ask you a few questions? What do you want to know? Do you know if she was seeing anybody before she died? You mean like a boyfriend? That's exactly what we mean. This is very important. She was seeing a guy, but she swore me to secrecy. She didn't want her mom to know. Why not? Because he was married. We're going to want to talk to this boyfriend. Do you have any idea if he's still around? No, I don't. His name was Rick Cooper. He worked at a used car lot over on D Street, but that was a long time ago. Afternoon, folks. Look no further. I've got just the thing you're looking for. Oh, what would that be? Fast, sleek, sporty convertible. Because that's what this little lady would be driving if she was my wife. And you look like you're at least as intelligent as me. I'll take that as a compliment. Except I'm not his wife, and we're not here to buy a car. Interesting approach, though. It's a living. So, uh, what can I do for you? We were told you were the owner. That's right. We're with the FBI. We're looking for a guy named Rick Cooper. We understand that he used to work here, wondering if he still does. Yeah, Ricky's been gone for years. Do you know where he might be or how to contact him? I've probably got a file on him. I make it a point to keep good records. You never know when you're going to need them. I don't know if it's any good anymore, though. Uh, what do you do? We don't know if he did anything. We just want to talk to him. In that file you mentioned, would you happen to have his social security number? Probably. While I go check, Look around. If you see anything that catches your eye, I'm sure I could allow a nice little law enforcement discount. Lucky for you, I already have a convertible. <laughs> Two, one, six, eight. Yeah, that's the social. Last known address, 105 Circle Drive. Oh, and Tara, run a rap sheet for all surrounding states. Yeah, the full workup. OK, thanks. Maybe we can do a drive-by on the way back to the office. Who knows? Maybe he still lived there. You're finally starting to think like me, Thomas. Let's keep it a secret. I wouldn't want to sully my good name at the bureau. Hi. You wouldn't happen to be Mrs. Cooper, would you? Yeah, well, I probably wouldn't if I didn't have to be, but I'm afraid I am. Who are you? FBI. We'd like to talk to your husband. <laughs> That's a joke, right? No, we just want to ask him some questions. Uh, good luck. He's been dead for five years.
even if Rick Cooper was the one who robbed the bank and killed Julie, there's no way we're gonna get a DNA match from him now. Nothing in the house to get it from? Old clothes, hairbrush, anything? According to the widow, when she waded back into the dating pool a couple of years ago, she decided to move on with her life, so she got rid of all of his personal stuff. So there's no evidence that Cooper's even the one. All we know is that a friend of Julie said she was seeing him. We know one thing, Julie was not the person her mother thought she was. All this information and five bucks will get you a latte. Looks like we're right back where we started, which is nowhere. Maybe not. Uh, Lucy and I talked to JP. He said to find out if Rick Cooper's mother is still alive. I did a search, and it turns out she is. Mm, not sure where you're going with this. It's called Mitro something DNA. I didn't get the whole word. Mitochondrial. I had a case where we used it. Now, the DNA of Cooper and his mother would have some common markers. We might not be able to prove that Cooper's DNA was the one in the Nixon mask, but we can prove if she was the mother of the person who wore the Nixon mask. Sometimes the things we can do surprise even me. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper? Yes? FBI, you got a minute? Oh, my goodness. Did I do something? I mean, did I maybe go somewhere on my computer that I shouldn't have? I mean, sometimes when I'm on the internet, I, I find myself in places, you know, I don't know how I got there. Uh, no, it's nothing like that. Well, you know, I've heard about that. I mean, sometimes people end up on a terrorist site. You know, things like that. It's kind of scary, really. Uh, we'd just like to ask you a few questions about your son, Rick. Well, he died about five years ago. And we're sorry. But we do need something from you. Well, this has got to be illegal. Indecent, at the very least. Jack, you got to see this. What is it? Tara's figured out why Miles has suddenly become the world's most sought-after bachelor. Can you put it on the big screen? Ciao. My name is Miles Leland III. Inviting you to join me for a romantic Italian dinner on the Italian Riviera. That's right, in Italy. All expenses on me. You know, I've been all over the world in my capacity as a special agent for the FBI. But I can honestly say that I have never been anywhere as beautiful or as romantic as my beloved Italy. He's not Italian. You ain't seen nothing yet. It would be my pleasure, make that my honor, to show you the sights that have inspired men to write beautiful poetry and create the great art that speaks to the romantic in each of us. So please, bid on me, won't you? Bid generously, bid often. Remember, we're doing this all for the children. together for that jet-setting playboy, the James Bond of the new millennium, Super Agent Miles Leland III, a.k.a. the Italian Stallion. Woohoo! Uh, well, I have to admit it, Miles, it's a brilliant plan. What woman could pass up a trip to Italy? Not the man who saved the world, no less. I never said I saved the world. Well, whatever you said, it's working. You're the leader in the clubhouse. My hat's off to you. I'm impressed. Not many guys would spend the money it takes to take a woman to Italy just to win a contest. I wonder what that's going to cost. Remember, it's all for the children. Well, I know I might never be able to catch you, Miles, but I'm not doing too badly, considering I'm limiting my date to this continent. Actually, Jack, you've had a higher number of bids than anybody. Every time there's a bid made for you, like clockwork, and within minutes, another bid immediately comes in that tops it. Looks like someone has you on a automatic bidding process. Someone's making sure they don't lose you. Can you tell who it is? Some of the bids are anonymous, but not this one. I think she wants the world to know she's got dibs on you. I hope it's not who I'm afraid it might be. Oh, I'm betting it's exactly who you're afraid it might be. Yeah, who would that be? If you're afraid it might be Eleanor Rippendorf, then I'm afraid it's who you're afraid it might be. That's what I was afraid of. It's price to pay for being so darn irresistible. This could get awkward. It's from JP. Ran to him in the hallway. What is it? Lab report on Rick Cooper's mother's DNA. It was a mitochondrial match to the DNA in the Nixon mask. Looks like Rick Cooper's your guy. 
On August 23rd, 1991, a man wearing a Richard Nixon mask robbed a bank, killed one of the tellers and a guard. Your husband's DNA has been linked to the DNA we found in that mask. Oh, that's impossible. I'm sure this comes as quite a shock to you, but... No, I mean, that really is impossible. August 23rd, 1991, my husband and I were in Paris. With all due respect, that was 12 years ago. How can you remember exactly where you were? Because August 22nd, 1991, was our fifth wedding anniversary. So for our fifth wedding anniversary, we went back to Paris because that's where we went on our honeymoon. You're absolutely certain about that? I've been out of the continental United States twice in my life. Once for my honeymoon and once for my fifth wedding anniversary. It's not something I'm going to forget. I guarantee you, he wasn't here. I checked Kathy Cooper's story. She and her husband were definitely in Paris on the date of the robbery. She has his old stamped passport and pictures with the date embedded on them in front of the Eiffel Tower and the Champs-Élysées. By the way, don't you just love saying that? The Champs-Élysées. But how can that be? The DNA linked him. No, it actually didn't. Um, the DNA merely proved that the person who wore the mask was the son of Rick Cooper's mother. Which means it could be his brother. He has a brother? Brian. And we've already tracked him down. Brian? Yeah? Hey! What is this? FBI. We'd like to talk to you. So, Brian, the way I see it, the robbery's going down just the way you and Julie planned. Then the thing with the guard happened, and after you shot him, you panicked. You knew Julie was the only one who was gonna be able to ID you, and you figured she was gonna be able to handle robbery, but probably not murder. So you shot her, eliminating the only witness who could testify against you. It's quite an imagination you boys have. Too bad the FBI doesn't have a creative writing curriculum. Well, you obviously have no proof to back up these allegations, so it begs the question, why are we even here? Did we forget to mention that we found strands of hair in the mask that the killer slash bank robber was wearing? Don't you just love the new DNA world we live in? Okay, a couple of strands of hair that could have come from anywhere in a case that happened 12 years ago? Come on. He's your lawyer. He has to say stuff like that to justify all that money that you're paying him. But when we compare your DNA to the DNA in that mask, you and I both know that it's going to be a match. Then comes the question I know the jury's going to want to have answered how to get there. And I don't think you have access to the FBI evidence room. Or do you? You know, there's another way we could go here. I'm in a bit of a deal-making mood right now. But it won't be for very long. What kind of deal? 15 years. It looks like you either said 15 years or 50 years. 15. Uh, no, Jack, you can't make that deal. The guy has no prior convictions. This is a 12-year-old case, and he's been clean ever since. Now, even with the DNA evidence, which Cooper's lawyer could argue is very flimsy, it's far from a slam dunk we could convince a jury to convict at all. Julie was only 22 years old. 15 years in jail is not enough for taking her life. I have to agree. Even if she was in on the robbery, she didn't deserve to die. Hey, I know what you're saying, and I don't disagree. Jack, no. I made a promise to Julie's mother. Sue, Sue. It is her mother that I'm thinking about here, okay? If we don't take this deal, this goes to trial. And then all the information about Julie being an accomplice will have to come out. Is that what you want Phyllis Randall to know just before she breathes her last breath? Fifteen years for taking my baby's life? No, I don't want to agree to that. I know it doesn't seem fair, Phyllis. Oh, it's not fair. My baby was stolen from me. And he's alive. You know, in 15 years, he'll be back living his life like nothing happened, and Julia will still be gone. How could you let this happen? It's, um, it's the best we felt we could do under the circumstances. Your best isn't good enough. This isn't justice. I trusted you, and you let me down.
She thought... Betray her. You were answer to her prayers. Someone else might have been able to solve this case. But they wouldn't have given her the gift that you gave her. I can't thank you gentlemen enough for your contribution to the bachelor auction. Bidding just closed and by all indications it's been a fabulous success. I'm certainly doing my part, if you know what I mean. Gotta go verify the bids and find out who the lucky ladies are. When they call your name as a date, I'll divert their attention while you blast your way out of here. Or I could just shoot you. Fewer bullets, less collateral damage. <laughs> oh, where have you been, Miles? You're late. You missed dinner. Oh, no. I missed the rubber chicken and the powdered potatoes. Oh, well, I'll just have to console myself with the biggest, thickest steak and the largest lobster dinner that can be found in the metropolitan D.C. area, all courtesy of my fellow FBI bachelor contestants. Pretty sure of yourself, Miles. Never know. Could have been a last-minute flurry of voting activity. Dream on, koala boy. Victory is mine. <laughs> I don't know. On the last day, it becomes a blind auction. Nobody gets to see the results. But Miles did have a pretty formidable lead. Let's just say that these results have never really been in question. At least not once you offered a European vacation as the prize. Even your presence can't totally ruin the appeal of a holiday on the Italian Riviera. <laughs> <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to announce it's now time to get down to what we really came here for, the results of the Bachelor auction. To kick things off, we'll start with our FBI contingent. First, the bachelor that, to our surprise and delight, brought the highest price of all the entrants, Miles Leland III. Please stand up, Miles. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the lucky winner of the lovely Italian dinner with Miles, on the Italian Riviera, my goodness, is anonymous. That's strange. I, I don't believe that's ever happened before. Well, I, I guess you truly do have a secret admirer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <sighs> it's good to be king. Next up, we have FBI Special Agent Bobby Manning. If you didn't buy me, I hope you didn't make a mistake you're going to regret. I'll take my chances. For Agent Manning, the winning bid was submitted by Gladys Shelton. Oh, my goodness. That's me! <laughs> Looks like you rolled the dice and lost, darling. You could be history. And last but certainly not least. Someone who I can tell you from personal experience is a very special agent, <laughs> Mr. Jack Hudson. <laughs> and the winner of the dream date with the captivating agent Hudson is none other than yours truly, Sue Thomas. I can't be wrong. Have a Did she just say my name? Yes. But I didn't bet. What did you two do? We had to do something. We couldn't stand by and let Jack be fed to the lioness. 
And after all, it is for the good of the kids. <laughs> I want to recount. Does Bobby know you set it up? Not a clue. <laughs> but look at him. He's got her feeling like she's the most important person here. Gotta love a guy like that. Let's just hope she doesn't blow a hip out there. <sighs> Sorry to bother you, Mr. Leland, hmm? but the credit card you used to buy yourself didn't go through. Oh. Do you have another card we could try? Wait a minute. You were anonymous? You bought yourself? Uh, you what? I did some number crunching. Oh. Have you any idea what a trip to the Italian Riviera would have cost me? <laughs> Here, try this. Since you bought me, the least I could do is ask you to dance. I can't hear the music, remember? I could be dangerous out there. I'll take my chances. Someone who ice skates, plays the piano, and sings. I figured dancing wouldn't be too hard. You know what they say. Following is all about who's leading. Is Eleanor OK? She'll get over it. Or what did she say? She was a little embarrassed. She said she didn't know that you and I were an item. She must have been relieved when you're totally right. Well, I didn't exactly tell her that. What did you tell her? I sort of told her that you and I were very close, that the band was playing our song, so I had to dance with you. I hope you're not mad at me. No. So, what is this song of ours the band is playing? I don't know. I like it. <laughs> 